Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. This time I want to share six creative ways how you can use comping. And comping is making a comp or a composite track from multiple takes. So you would record multiple takes of either a vocalist or playing instruments and then choose the best parts of each. And that is a quick editing procedure. And that was included in Life 11. And you don't have to use it this way. You can use it in different ways. And this is what we're going to look at today. So my first tip, what you can use comping creatively for is when you play clips tonally. So what I've done here is I've mapped an audio clip to a range of notes. If you want to know how this works, because this is an undocumented feature that's been enabled in life for a long time, I have a video for that that I'm going to link. It works for audio and MIDI clips. And one last tip before we get into the comping is um, you can use the legato that you can find under the follow actions tab. So then the clip would continue to play even when you trigger new MIDI notes. I won't do this because I actually prefer how this works without legato on in my case. So, and I've already set it up so that I've, I've got a beat that I can orient myself towards and I've got the loop on and now we only have to start recording and changing the clip. Okay, that should be enough. Now, when we click on this track and we do command or control if you're on Windows and Alt and U, we can unfold the take lanes. And then I can press B to turn the draw mode on. And then what we can do is simply make selections. And then we have a quick listen back. Of course, you can you know take more time to find the right bits. I can also go in here. This was actually quite nice, I think. Tip number two are follow actions. I have already set up some drum clips here that I've set the follow actions to a 50-50 chance to play the next clip down or randomly one but not the same one that's currently playing. And I've unlinked it so it doesn't play all the way through but plays only a 16th note and then it jumps to the next one. And I've also turned the legato mode on so that basically the clip position is maintained. If you want to learn about follow actions, I've got a tutorial for this as well. I will link this above and in the description below. So now let's quickly set this up here and turn loop on. And then we're going to just start recording. <laughs> So let's take this back to the arrangement view, do command or control alt pursue and then maybe we're going to zoom into this with the Z. Draw mode on. And then we can just play back. Oops. 
My third tip is to use comping for mapped clip parameters. This is another topic that I have a tutorial on that I will link. So when I go into MIDI mapping mode with Command or Control M, then what you can see is that I've mapped the pitch here to an encoder on my push in the user mode. And I've also mapped the nudge buttons forwards and backwards. So let's check. Yeah, we've got the loop set looping on and then we can just get started. Okay, now let's go over to the arrangement view, make it active, zoom in, and then show the take lanes. And then we can just turn on the draw mode again and just select bits and pieces. And let's have a quick listen. Tip number four, use it for recording the generative output of media effects. So I've made a tutorial series a while ago about generative music. I'm going to link this as well. And from this, you can actually get this from the fourth tutorial. That's the melody gen is included, but it comes from the tutorial for the melody generation that I've just cleaned up. And so what we can do is this, you can use different ways. You can either record the MIDI output or you could record the audio output because comping also works for MIDI output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new MIDI track with command or control shift and T. Then I'm going to set this to the second track, Armit. And I'm also going to grab the preset so that we can listen to the output while we're doing it. And let's see if that's set. Nope. So let's set that. Turn loop on. And now we can go back in here and start recording. Okay, let's go over to the arrangement view and we're going to zoom in and then unfold to take lanes again. And now we can just go by what we can see. It's very nice to actually have more control over generative media output in the end, because otherwise, if you're rendering everything, it just comes out the way it was randomly created and you might not like it and would have to render things over and over. Let's have a listen to this. We're going to turn this one off. <music> Tip number five is using it to record the output of the Hocket technique that I showed just recently. I'm going to link the tutorial as well. And so we've got two options. We can either record this within the track. So we basically just record the automation or we can record the output to an audio channel so that we've basically got it printed, but then we can't make any changes anymore. I'm actually going to do both because that's possible. So 
we're gonna have to arm this track and then I'm gonna set the audio track to get the input from the second track and we're gonna have to arm this track as well and then we can just play it Okay, let's hop over to the arrangement view, zoom in, and then we can turn this on. I'm gonna for now go into the MIDI track, and so we're gonna turn the take lines on again. You can't have the take lanes and the automation on at the same time. So if I wanted to go into the automation mode, you see the take lanes are hidden automatically. But what we can do, just remember how it looks now, and then we can go back into the draw mode and then just select things. It's a bit weird having all this in pink because then I can't really see much what I'm selecting here at the moment. That doesn't seem to look right either. So, but you can see here that it's been, we've made different selections and then we can go back into the automation mode and you can see it's different. And so this way you can basically make changes to that and then see, okay, so I like this clip and this part and make changes still. You can still record it out to audio later on if you like. And my last tip is to record the parameter changes of audio effects on the fly. And here we again have two choices. We can either record it directly onto the track where we would record basically the parameter changes as automation, or we could record it onto another audio track. I'm just going to do the first, but just remember that you've got the option. So I'm going to have to turn loop on. Make sure that the loop is here and then we can just start recording. should be enough. Now let's zoom in, open up the take lanes and then we could go into draw mode and make selections. Maybe make this active in the arrangement view first. So let's have a quick listen what we've got there. Okay. 
Of course, it's better to carefully select which parts you want to keep from which take, but you get my point. And of course, you can combine the examples I've shown and it hopefully gives you ideas as well of what else you could use the take lanes for, and particularly that you can't just use them for audio tracks, but also media tracks. I hope you found this helpful. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.